to another episode of Throttle Grotto. This week we are going to be on the other side of the garage. Um, <clears throat> I picked up a little quick project. Um, I'm not trying to get into like a B is for build thing where I have like 400 projects laying around and no time to do any of them. Um, no disrespect to that guy, uh, Chris, because he he definitely has a lot of projects, but uh, he's got a really successful channel. And if you haven't checked him out, check out the BS for Build uh, on YouTube. Anyway, enough about that. So this one is a quickie project. <clears throat> it is a 2002 Jetta wagon. So it's a 2002 Jetta wagon, uh, 1.8 turbo engine, uh, automatic transmission. I actually got it from a transmission shop. Uh, they had it advertised on Craigslist, and the price was right. Uh, the engine died like 20 minutes after they sold it. Uh, the reason they sold it is because the person that brought it in for the transmission work couldn't pay the bill, and they had already gone through and did the transmission work. So it's got a freshly rebuilt uh, automatic transmission in it. I know nobody likes automatics, but this is not a car for me to drive, this is a car for me to make a little bit of money on and pay some bills with. So, uh, so yes, it's an automatic, it's a 1.8T, it's got a, something's wrong with the engine. Um, I hooked the battery up into it yesterday out the driveway and cranked it over. It doesn't sound right when it's cranking, it's definitely getting fuel because you can smell it, so it's definitely something with either compression or ignition. Um, so, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and pull the plugs uh, and reset the engine timing. I'll probably reset the engine timing first. Makes sense. Just to check and, uh, check and see. Uh, there's a bunch of stuff I have to pull out of the way to get to where all the timing marks are on the bottom side here. And uh, <clears throat> so that's going to be the first order of the day is we're just going to reset the timing. I already pulled codes on it with my computer. It's got a camshaft position sensor error, which is generally indicative of a timing problem. Uh, it could just be a camshaft position sensor. I don't think I'm going to get that lucky. But first thing to do is check all the timing marks. So we have to pull the serpentine belt and uh, make sure all the timing marks are still lined up. If those are good to go, we will swap out the cam position sensor. Make a runner out of this and then it's just going to get a clean up and uh, a detail and then we're going to put it up for sale and hopefully make a little bit of money on this. So that is our episode for today. Um, we will either be successfully running by the end of this episode or we'll be removing the cylinder head and taking it in for repairs. So there you go. So stay tuned. just a long quarter inch drive extension <clears throat> and put it down on the cylinder I'm having a hard time getting to all these timing marks on here they really made it difficult to get to the crankshaft timing mark it's actually there's a cover that goes underneath the passenger side engine mount uh, it's kind of a pain <laughs> the serviceability on these cars is sometimes frustrating so anyway I'm just going to put this down in cylinder number one. And I'm just going to rotate the crank until it comes to its highest position. So, real, real easy way to check for top dead center. So this came to the highest position on this cylinder, and I'll see if we can make this a little easier to see here. So I don't know if you can see it, but 
I'll use the spark plug to point it out. Right here is the mark for top dead center. So that is the timing mark lined up correctly. The timing belt looks to be in good condition. I've gone through by hand and turned the motor over a few times. I don't feel like anything is interfering or or hit it. There's a little st a little stumble and I don't I don't know if maybe it jumped timing and then someone reset the marks. But apparently we've got a few more things to look at here. All right, so I guess the next thing to do is take all the plugs out and take a look at them. And so this plug number one was pretty loose. So far I'm not seeing anything that's like a warning sign or like a big red flag. Plugs are slightly brown which is good. Not covered in oil. So they all look fairly good up to this point. got a little bit of oil in it but that could just be from the valve cover because it's not on the tip of the plug it was all at the base so that tells me that the valve cover gasket is probably leaking which isn't a big deal pretty easy to do at this point here so I don't see any warning signs yet um, I think the first thing we're gonna look at since I had a camshaft position sensor error code is it's right here, it's right on the end. I have another one on a on the motor that I was going to donate to this vehicle as a if this motor had suffered catastrophic failure because I really didn't know. So we'll swap it out and see if we get any success. It's a good idea to thread in plugs by hand and then just snug them up with the wrench that way you don't cross thread them. So at this point, we don't have our serpentine belt hooked up, so our alternator, uh, power steering, AC, none of that stuff's gonna run, but doesn't matter for a, a short, quick check. Uh, the water pump on these is internal, so the water pump would run. So we could run it in place like that for, for quite some time and not worry about it. So I'll uh, hop in the car and give it a shot. We'll see if just this little hull sender camshaft position sensor module was the problem. Doesn't hurt to try. Alright, I'm smelling plenty of fuel up here, so I think, I think we're getting fuel. Um, 
think the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to check for power at the injector or at the uh, plugs here. Okay, so I set up this super janky way of testing uh, that I'm getting a signal from the ECU. Um, you have a, uh, I have a 12 volt LED because look, uh, one of the things it says in the manual is that you need to test these two pins with an LED test light. Well. My test light is really old and it is uh, not an LED one. So uh, so I have an LED bulb, like an interior uh, bayonet bulb, and these, and it's like super bright. So we can use that. I've just got a couple of screws just lightly threaded in here for contact. Um, I guess one of the things that would be good to test is that these screws are actually conductive. I, I assume they are, but yes. So, um, so I just really, really just loosely threaded these in here just to get some contact. I'm not reefing them down in there with a screwdriver or anything like that to bend the pins or anything. Um, so, number three is power from the ECU, number two is a ground, and those are the two pins that the manual suggested to check with our improvised LED test light here. And we'll give it a crank and see, but I think we're not getting signal from the ECU, I think is why it's not running. So. So absolutely no flashing on our on our test there. So we are definitely not getting a, a ignition signal from the ECU, which is why the car is not running. So the next step is to get to the ECU, which on these cars is not terrible, but it's not a great time either. Um, so I have to remove the windshield wipers, remove this plenum that goes underneath the windshield, and then I can get to all of the ECU stuff through here. The ECU and the transmission ECU are both underneath the plenum here. So that is our next step. So I've undone the plugs here. I'm looking to see if anything is obvious, like has been chewed through or anything like that by a rodent. I don't, I don't see anything up here that looks damaged. It could be at this point that this EC, uh, ECU is just gone bad. It's very possible. Um, a real quick way we can check is I have a I have a spare ECU. It's not programmed for this car, but it will allow the engine to fire and then it'll shut off. So we can plug it in real quick and try it. <clears throat> I mean, we already know I'm not getting power there. I've checked the relays underneath here. There's two relays in here that I've checked. Both are both are okay. Um, and we'll just, real quick, just try plugging another ECU in because that one to play with. Yeah. 
So that is the same result with a different ECU. So now we're really going to have to start doing some investigating here. So we still have an issue with signal from the uh, ECU not getting to the coils. So we need to start looking at, is there a break in the wiring somewhere? Is there, who knows? <laughs> um, so I'm going to do a little research and then we'll keep looking. Well, I've gone through all of the obvious stuff on the wiring. Well, you guys were away. I did a bunch of checks on the wiring. I, I really can't find anything wrong with the wiring. I did find one weird thing underneath the dash. It looked like someone had a, uh, a blow and go or something on there uh, before. And so I fixed that thinking, well, maybe I found it. It was really super easy. And that wasn't it. So, um, all the wiring stuff checks out, which only leaves the engine as the probable as the problem. So I think the first thing I'm going to do is just going to pull the valve cover off, and we're going to take a look at the cams, see if the cams are timed right, because that could be, you know, if it jumped timing somehow, um, it could be one of the issues. was really hoping for the easy get lucky fix on this car. Not that pulling a, you know, swapping out a cylinder head is really difficult, but it just would have been nice to have that super quick, easy fix that, you know, nobody really looked at because they just were not really interested in pursuing it. And makes it a super easy job to get it running and then spend most of my time on the, on doing a cleanup. But it doesn't look like that's going to be the case this time. Welcome back. Uh, kind of knocked off early last night and I got home from work today and just decided to knock out getting the cylinder head off real quick. Um, one thing I noticed already is I haven't looked at the bottom of the cylinder head yet, so I don't know if there's any bent valves yet. But I did notice some, some gaps underneath the lifters here. The head bolts were really loose, like uh, I could have un did the head bolts with a 3 8 ratchet, which is not not normal. Um, so right now I'm actually undoing the exhaust manifold bolts and all of these are coming. <laughs> like I could do undo these with a stubby ratchet. They are really loose.
the exhaust manifold is off, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna leave that gasket on there for now. Uh, I'm just gonna spin this thing around and I'm gonna get a look at the bottom here. Yeah, we've we have definitely got some bent valves here. Um, I am going to grab a wrench, and we'll we can rotate we can rotate this over. It's not going to hurt anything, but I think we've got this valve bent. This one we've definitely got multiple. Oh yeah, yeah, this, this thing. Bent a fair amount of valves. I'll show you. Let's see if I can. I can hold this in place and turn it over. This valve here should match this one. This one should be closed. That's definitely bent. This one's definitely bent, because this one's closed, but this one's not. The, this one looks like it's got a little bend to it, which is definitely enough to let compression out. This one is way bent. It doesn't even... Actually, both of these are bent. So, this engine basically had probably zero compression. It bent every single one of the valves. So, now we know why it didn't want to run. Um, bent valves all over the place. So, come Monday morning, uh, I'm going to run this over to the uh, cylinder head place and they will fill it full of new valves and uh, charge me some money and uh, then we can put it back on and get this thing running. Alright everybody, uh, out here in the driveway because it's a nice cool night and I didn't feel like spilling G12 coolant all over uh, my floor of the garage. <laughs> so I rolled out in the driveway and uh, here we are. So here's the telltale signs that we had piston to valve contact every single cylinder. And those are all on the exhaust side. So, um, the good thing is this car has 120,000 miles on it. The cross hatch looks really nice. Um, you know, the cylinders are clean. Um, and uh, it didn't look like there was any oil or water contamination. So, that is a good sign. Uh, I am going to quickly spin these cylinders over a little bit, wipe them out, and then hose them down with some lubricant to keep them from becoming rusty and nasty in the couple of weeks that it's going to take to get the cylinder head back. So I'll show you guys what I'm going to do. It's pretty straightforward. I'm just I already shot a little bit of lubricant in these cylinders, especially the two in the center. You can use WD-40, you can use anything really because that's all going to burn off, but you just want to prevent the cylinders from rusting. Uh, depending on where you're at, that could happen sooner or later. So I'll just roll these over to the other two. Don't be afraid to over lube these for sure because it'll it's easy to clean it up with some lacquer thinner afterwards. One more thing that I wanted to show you guys was the head gasket that came off of here. Let's go take a look. You can learn a lot from a head gasket. You can look, it's kind of like a, a tale of what's been going on. So 
Remember when I said I thought that this thing had had the head off recently? Not according to this head gasket, it hasn't. Uh, it doesn't look like it's been off for a while. It was really stuck to the block. This is the side that was against the block. Um, so you can look in the in the centers here and see if there's any cracks or anything like that that would allow stuff to go between the cylinders. You can look between your oil passages, your water passages, if there's any sections that are steam cleaned or anything like that. This will tell you. That means you've had water getting past. Um, so don't just take don't just take the head gasket off and just throw it away before you you look at it because this thing will tell the story too. So the only thing left for me to do tonight is clean up. Uh, I don't think you guys are going to come over and help, and that's okay. Uh, that is going to be our episode for this week. Uh, I told you that guys, guys that I was going to get the head off one way or another, and unfortunately it took me one extra day to do it. So it might take me one extra day to get this video loaded up. But uh, next week, the cylinder head will be off to the machine shop. The second parts Jetta that we have out front will be going to the scrapyard and the wagon will be parked until we get the cylinder head back. Uh, and then hopefully next week I will have some room to roll the rabbit outside and start working on the interior getting all the floor pan stuff prepped. This week was rainy and nasty on my day off so it was nice to actually have this job to do inside. Until next week, thanks for watching Throttle Grotto, and get out there and work on something.